As a little bonus, we'll introduce this notion of the finally block, which gives you a guaranteed little bit of code that executes regardless of whether there are problems within your execution. The idea of the finally block is there's some things you want to have happen no matter what. So as I said, one of my favorite places to shop has been Aldi. I've been going there for years. There's interesting little foods to find, nice prices, fun little store. Um, so one of the quirks at Aldi, being a store that focuses on keeping costs low, is you have to take a quarter with you and put it into your grocery cart, shop, cart to unlock it from a chain of tied to all the other grocery carts. And then the incentive is you take it back yourself and get your quarter back. And so let's say you go to that store. If you decide, like, I'm not going to buy anything here because I don't have cash and I can't pay for my food, you still want your quarterback. So you've got to, you know, take everything out of your cart, put it back, take your quarterback out, it's a cart back out, put it back on, get your quarterback. If the store catches fire, you still want your quarterback. So you got to run out, you know, dump all the groceries, run outside, put your cart back go ahead a little bit absurd at that point but again the point being is whether i buy my groceries successfully or not i want my quarter back i want my deposit back for getting that cart and so we need a mechanism in which to do that because java doesn't clearly give us a place in which we can do both whether things go or don't go well and so inside of that there could be two different places that it happens now right here you can see try catch block and inside of the, the you know the try catch block, if something bad happens, by the way, if something bad happens, I don't handle it, then that becomes really really tough. So what I could do is I could say I'm going to handle all things. I could say I'm going to finish this method with getting my quarterback, and then I'm going to throw the exception. This is the other part of Java um, stuff. You're allowed to throw introduce exceptions to your own. But this is a very bad thing in this case. You shouldn't do it this way because it's kind of like Somebody calls 911 and then 911 calls 911. Um, you know, the problem there is you haven't connected the actual parties that are responding and, and dealing with the exception to the actual cause of the exception. So you don't want to do this code. This is bad code. And it's not needed because it's complicated, it's confusing, and there's a better mechanism inside of there. So what we want to do instead is what's called the finally block. So I have a try block, which is, hey, these are the things that could go wrong. I have the catch block, is which is, hey, this is my response to if this thing goes wrong, what I'm going to do. And you can have any number of these inside of there. You know, that doesn't change that. And then you have the finally block that says whether or not anything went wrong, you need to do this stuff. So in this instance we're looking at here, I could have a try block that's reading some code from a file. If something goes wrong with a the file, then I'm going to tell the user something went wrong with the file. And in either case, I want to attempt to close the file because I'm done working with it. I'm not going to work with it either way. I say attempt to because there's no guarantee the things you're doing inside of there are safe. Closing the file could very well cause another exception to happen on that file. Um, so the finally is a mechanism to be able to do something, but it doesn't guarantee anything. Normally what you can do in a finally block is more so like notify people like, hey, I'm done with this. So you could check out to say, I'm going to go work with this file now. And then you try to open the file, read the file. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. At the end, you tell the system, like, hey, I'm done working with this file right now. That could be something like that that you're doing here. But that's the idea of the finally. Whether I do it successfully or whether I fail, the finally block will run every single time the software runs. So here's an example. Um, so we call something that could have an exception. So if nothing goes wrong, it prints out A and then it prints out C. Because you know that's it worked. This line works successfully. We'll call with the exception. If a if nothing, no exception happened, a will happen. Then c will get printed out because it happens every single time. If something else goes wrong with this, everything goes wrong. Then the exception happens, and then b gets printed out instead of a, and then c again gets printed. If a throwable goes wrong and neither of those happen, then then c itself would be printed, which isn't shown here, but it's guaranteed to run before I continue on. As I said, it could screw stuff up further, but the idea is you're doing something safe, something you can get away with there. Now, the one exception inside of this, potentially, and it doesn't happen every single time, but if inside of my um, catch block, I do a system.exit, 
it might be the case that the program does actually terminate before the finally happens. And it's not even guaranteed. It's, it's a race condition at that point. It, it might actually do finally. It might not. Uh, but there is a chance that this is the case. So it's just something to be aware of. But this is extremely rare. And it's something you can just not do. You can just choose not to you know, just exit the code directly. You can do that later on. You know, just do an if statement after the finally happens. Hey, if uh, the catch block said to exit, then exit now. That, that sort of thing can happen. So it's easy enough to be able to work around. So test your code. Check this out just in case you ever need to do something like that. So the full syntax then of try catch to kind of wrap all of this around is a try block is used to identify some number of lines of code. It can be one line of code, could be 10 lines of code, could be thousands of lines of code where an exception could happen. If in any one of those lines of code in the try block an exception happens, it will jump to one of the catch blocks depending on if you have multiples and then the type of the exception classes that's inside of there. Now, one of the nuances inside of here is when I define the exception, I'm giving it a class. So I want to say, what's the type of the exception? And I'm giving it a variable name. Because remember, an exception is not an abstract thing. If your kid was naughty at school, they don't send home a g general letter that says somebody's kid was naughty at school. They send home a specific letter. It said, your kid, little insert name here, did whatever the wrong thing they did, insert here. And their punishment was whatever the punishment was, insert here. That's what we get with an exception. So we say the type of thing was a home incident report from bad behavior or a nurse's report or a, you know, that's what the exception class is, the type of thing that went wrong. And then the variable tells us the specific instance information. You know, what, where did this error occur? What part of the flow? What line of code was involved? What was the variables when this thing died? At least the ones that are stored inside that exception class. Not everything, just the stuff you, that are consciously saved by whoever coded that exception, which could be you. So that's the, the next important thing is that catch block. And then the finally block is, hey, whenever either of those are done, I'm going to do some work before they go off. And that's again, happens wherever, um, whatever happens, whether the try happens successfully, whether the catch happens because the try failed, or whether neither of them happen be successfully because the exception was something that we didn't declare to have happen that finally will execute. All right, so that's the last piece to pulling around here. So as you code these things, you'll get more practice on it. And some of the toughest stuff is around this use of variables inside of here. So that's something you're going to practice and will be, you know, it's talked about more on the demo side of this, but just the conceptual side of this. Remember, through all this, we talked about it, exceptions are objects, and then this is something that's important. So let's look again at the mechanics of this. So when we see a try catch block in action, I can have any code inside of here, and it could have any bad thing that happens. But the code executes the catch block only when that specific type of thing happens, and it finally happens every single time. All right, so that's the mechanics that's important to understand. The multiple catches means, very simply, I jump to the first catch block that is the type that, that matches mine. So... If it's part of an I.O. exception, it would jump here. If it's a SQL exception, it would jump there. Those two things are mutually exclusive. So that means the requirement is things like exception, the higher level things in the hierarchy, have to come last because that's after everything else has happened. Because remember, both an I.O. exception and a SQL exception are types of exceptions in that hierarchy sense. And so that happens last after neither of those other things happens. Not both of these happen, one or the other. So this is all I.O. exceptions. This is all SQL exceptions. This is all things that are exceptions that are not I.O. or SQL exceptions. That's what happens in the third one here. All right, so that's the mechanics of the, uh, the, the try to catch blocks, the, the exceptions. We're doing a tiny bit of that stuff to get started with, but there's a lot more to the full world of what exceptions can do. So review this as needed. Come back to these concepts as needed, but always practice it in code.